Hi, this is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video, I'm, I'm going to be talking about my portable power box for my Phase 2 MCOM kit. And a portable power source is going to be a natural outgrowth once you get into this Phase 2 care territory because you're going to be supporting um, a couple of different radios. You might be supporting a, uh, an iPad or a, a tablet, uh, your iPhone or other type of smartphone. There's any number of, of things that you're going to need to keep charged up. If you're talking about an event that's going to last a couple of days, uh, this is definitely something you need to be thinking about. While um, oftentimes in some kind of MCOM scenario, you might be responding in a situation where there may be generators, but there very well may not be, particularly in uh, search and rescue type stuff or for the other, other phases of MCOM where you're talking about... Uh, mutual assistance group activities and, and uh, kind of those uncertain times. Uh, having the ability to have something in the service of radio is very important. And like a lot of folks, I built mine. You can buy these off the shelf. Um, you're going to end up paying more for it. And also you don't have that kind of pride and ownership of, uh, you know, doing it yourself. It's, it's always fun to take on a cool project and, and finish it out. So what you see here, this is a a portable power box, not unlike what you see all over the place on YouTube. There's any number of videos that uh, talk about making these. I used a, a couple of different examples to build mine. I have departed from a couple of norms that seem to be carried over from one project to another. Uh, I'll talk about those as I go through the different features of the box. But basically what we're talking about here, this is a, uh, a handheld uh, box. It's converted from an ammo can. I believe the... Uh, the brand on it. Oh, I may I may have covered it up with a sticker. It might be MTM or or one of those. Uh, I bought this particular ammo can at um, I think I bought it at Sportsman's Warehouse. And it's uh, let me break for a second and I'll grab the original the original box that I was going to use was this one. Now, I'm sorry, it's a Plano. Um, this turned out to be too small. For what I wanted to do so I went with the slightly larger size if I get time I'll post some of the build out on this or I may in fact because I, I want to do another version of this I may just do a cl complete build from the ground up and show you um, kind of how I put it together um, but let me go over the the features and show you sort of how it's set up a this is a um, uh, internally there's a 13 amp hour battery in here which is plenty enough to support a couple of radios and your various devices. And in fact, uh, one of the uses that I kind of keep this around the house for related to uh, needing power in, in grid down situations is I use this for my CPAP machine. Like a lot of people out there, I, I use a CPAP machine. And I keep in my uh, emergency power kit a, uh, I think this is made by Best Tech. I got it off of Amazon. It's a 300 watt power inverter. And it allows me to use this box and actually run a CPAP machine for a couple of days before I need to do a charge. But this same inverter could handle other uh, charging systems for radios. For instance, there are some radios that you might not have a, uh, a lighter adapter charge setup or, or charger cradle for your radio. You can just simply hook up the 300 watt power inverter and plug in your charging cradle just like you do in, in, in any normal situation in your home. But... Uh, let me show you how it's laid out and again show you a couple of departures that I've made. One of the first departures is you, you see a lot of these out there and what they've got are a couple of sets of uh, banana plug sets that are uh, plumbed into the top of the actual case. I didn't do that for a couple of reasons. One being if uh, I'm using this in rain, uh, I've got to worry about you know, conductivity of, uh, of water on the the contacts on this plus I, I just I'm a little nervous about having a couple of live contacts that I can short out myself and give myself a pretty nasty DC sh uh, voltage shock if you think a 13 amp hour battery uh, isn't gonna sting you just a bit you got another thing coming it'll uh, it smarts when you do that not to mention if you're transporting this and this is moving around inside of a car and these contacts can make contact with steel you're gonna melt this thing out pretty bad so I uh, I decided not to do that and instead make it completely detachable. And let me prop this up so you can get a little bit better camera angle. 
And what we have here, the, the front panel, let me first give a quick 360 around the thing. Really the only operative portion of this is gonna be this end. As you see here, uh, nothing. Got these little pieces, I'll talk about those in a moment. Nothing on the other end, nothing on that side, but uh, a couple of these. And, and what these are, by the way, is internally, um, I have supports for the battery, uh, the fuse box, I have the grounding terminal all uh, screwed into the side here. And where I've drilled holes, I've, I got these at Lowe's and they're interesting little capped uh, covers that you can run the uh, the small bolts that I use for the these mounting portions. And when they're done, you can snap and close. They're, uh, they're watertight and it gives it kind of a, a, a trimmer, more professional look. I tend to try to make any project I do look as pro level and, uh, and kind of pretty as possible. It's just a little pride of ownership thing for me. Unlike some ham projects I've seen, and I'm sure you've all seen some of them yourself, uh, someone will bring you some antenna or something that they've made, and I'm pretty darn proud of it. And it may work awesome, but most of the time they look like hammered crap on a hot sidewalk. But I, I try to make my stuff look kind of cool if I can. It's just the engineer in me. But the, uh, the front panel here, we have a main power switch with uh with this here i can turn that off and and there'll be no power going to any of the uh, the terminals or components i have a voltage meter here and a lot of these parts like a lot of folks that buy this stuff off of amazon uh this one i didn't i i had a uh i had another one and and you'll see these and i i the best way i can describe them is the front is just a has kind of a domed appearance to it they usually come in a set of three um it's not very good. The uh, The gauge itself is actually fairly inaccurate. This is a PowerWorks unit, a little bit more expensive, but it's worth it. Um, moving up here, we've got our uh, our requisite USB charging ports. I've got a uh, 5 volt 1 amp and a 5 volt 2.1 amp. And then at this point, and I don't really know what we're supposed to call these things now. Um, in In my day, we called them cigarette lighter plugs. I'm sure the automotive industry has a cool, slick name for it. But this is where I would put a number of items, um, whether it's the inverter that works off of this or my little banana plug adapter if I need to wire something in where I need to do the uh, the strip and plug method. That's, uh, that's the section that I access. And again, it gives me the, the ability to break this away and then I don't have those exposed banana plugs that make me a little bit nervous. But do whatever you want. Festoon this thing with as many banana plugs as you want. I don't care. But one thing that is missing, and uh, some hams will bring it up, they'll say, where are the Anderson power poles? And when it comes to Anderson power poles, I have been told, repeatedly in fact, that Am Anderson power poles are the they are the standardized power connection method for the ham radio uh, hobby. The problem with that is the rest of the world is unaware of this. And you're going to, uh, if you're going to be harvesting power or trying to uh, sort out power supply issues for a number of things, very seldom are you going to encounter anything that involves an Anderson power pole that isn't a, a homemade product or something designed specifically for the amateur radio community. Um, I'm, I'm not crapping on Anderson power poles. They're, they're pretty good, but they're not, um, they're not common within the rest of the electronics world. You will find them here and there, but they're not as prevalent as one would think. So I go to the lowest common denominator when it comes to uh, power harvesting. And if it's down to stripping some wires off and hooking it up to this in order to make a connect, connection, I'm good to go. However, I do have um, one of these adapter. I don't unfortunately know exactly where it's at. It's either in this bag or it's down in here, but I do have an Anderson power pole set up like this so that I can plug in if someone does already have that set up on their rig. But the primary intent and purpose of this, to be honest with you, is just to charge HTs, laptops, tablets, that kind of stuff. So it's fairly simple. Uh, I tend to, if I design something, I tend to make it as simple as possible so it's as easy to use. So let me now get into the internals on this. Let's go ahead and hit kill the master switch there. And I'll show you, it's uh, fairly simple, fairly straightforward. And I'll show you a couple things I like and don't particularly like about it. And let me turn this sideways so we can get a decent view. Let me check that angle. Yep, we can see in there okay. 
As you can see, I have the, the battery located here. Now, mistake one was I originally bought this battery for the for the other ammo can, and it would have fit, but I would have had some issues relating to the layout on the wiring. It was getting a little cramped. If I were to do this all over again, I would probably go with a much larger battery, and I probably will on the next project. However, this does afford me a nice little cubby hole here for the um, charge controller that I have um, for a portable uh, solar charger. And I'll probably end up going ahead and mounting this in here and then keeping this as a unit that can be solar charged if necessary. But I have found, again, that the 13 amp hour um, lead acid, uh, sealed lead acid battery is good to go. You can get pretty exotic with this if you wanted in terms of uh, some of the lithium batteries that are out there. I went with this purely from a cost standpoint. With everything out the door, this thing probably cost me well less than $100 in terms of, of materials. And again, the systems that you can buy out there, commercial off the shelf, are quite a bit more than that. They look fancier, but they really don't do anything that this doesn't already do. And as you can see, conventional wires here, though, I, I have everything, you know, nicely and, and cleanly routed. Everything goes into a common fuse box. Everything has, uh, uh, I believe we're looking at... Uh, 15 amp fuses and uh, again nice clean solid install common ground terminal and that's really about it as far as the internal side of things but it's a valuable piece of kit something that you definitely need to start thinking about as a, as a logical expansion into more stuff you might need for in, MCOM and as like everything else we've been talking about in terms of MCOM you can start out pretty mild and get pretty wild I have one unit that I'm currently building right now that's a huge step up from this, and it's for powering mobile rigs. And it is a, uh, a, a wheeled cart that is based off of a, uh, I think it's a Stanley wheeled toolbox. And it has a couple of um, uh, deep, uh, or deep cycle marine batteries in it. And that should be able to give me a, a very decent amount of power to run mobile rigs. And when I get that one done, I'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and do a, a video on that, of course. And then I'm working on a smaller unit because I'm kind of working on an expansion of this concept. And that's uh, built on a three-day assault pack kind of situation. And what we're looking at there is, is truly a, a pack that not only is going to allow you to take on a three-day excursion, but also support all your radio needs. And I'm looking at a slightly smaller version of this that will be able to fit inside the pack and either uh, function as an onboard power supply for something like uh, an ICOM 705 or one of the Zygu radios. Uh, but furthermore, it will achieve the same purpose, but it'll be incorporated into the pack, and it'll all be man portable. And, of course, leave your hands free for running, jumping, climbing, all that kind of cool stuff. So with that, that's kind of a, a quick overview. I'll probably do a, a, a detailed build and show you all the ways here, but to be honest with you, I'm not interested in if you copy what I've got. Look at look on YouTube. There's tons of examples already out there that are probably better in many ways than the ones I've done. Um, but just sort of think in terms of how can you get some, some portable power out there to charge this stuff up. It's nice to rely on a generator maybe being handy. Uh, it's nice to rely on maybe your power might be on. But it's also good to plan for if you don't have any of that available to you, sorting yourself out and doing the best you can with what you've got, where you're at. And with that, I'll bring this to a close and say thank you for watching. And 73s, this is Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, and I am clear.